caution, this experiment deals with very toxic chemicals such as hydrazine. Always conduct your own research and do not perform anything found in this video. I do not take responsibility for what you do in your own time. That being said, zinc hydrazine nitrate is a relatively obscure explosive, and upon doing a YouTube search, there's only its counterpart, nickel hydrazine nitrate, that actually comes up. However, according to this Science Madness post, someone's made it before, and also I had a not sketchy at all procedure that described its manufacture. Now that I had this information, I knew I had to make the first YouTube video on it. So some zinc, hydrazine sulfate, sodium hydroxide, fuming nitric acid, and ethanol were all gathered. The hydrazine sulfate I made in a previous video, you can go check that out. However, a forewarning is I did not take yields, I did not really measure, I just wanted to make this chemical, and at the end, I did in fact make it. It's not a long procedure, but I thought I'd let you know in case you're looking for a exact method. So to begin, some concentrated nitric acid was added to some zinc metal because what could go wrong? Oh sh- The second attempt at making the easiest part about this chemical, zinc nitrate, went a bit more as planned. Anyhow, because I'm such a responsible chemist and follow all the safety precautions, I finally got my zinc nitrate and nitric acid in a solution, so I put it on a hot plate and let it dissolve. Next, I set up my camera. You'll see some great camera angles in this video. And I decided to start weighing out my hydrazine sulfate, which once again, I made in a previous video. So 10 grams of hydrazine sulfate were added to a beaker and set aside. I did stoichiometric amounts for the hydrazine and sodium hydroxide, which will be used to freebase the hydrazine sulfate, just because it's a pain in the butt to make and you don't get very high yields from the experiment. Next, seven and a half grams of sodium hydroxide was weighed out and placed in a beaker. Now, ideally, you would make this ground into a fine powder and then dry mix it with the hydrazine sulfate to produce a better freebasing hydrazine technique. I do this in my nickel hydrazine nitrate video. However, because I didn't care about high yields in this experiment, I used a motor and pestle outside, which you'll see in the future. So if you are thinking of reattempting this video, which I don't think you should, you should go and check out the nickel hydrazine nitrate video on a different part of my channel and use that freebasing technique. So for the faster freebasing technique, I added the sodium hydroxide and hydrazine sulfate into the motor and pestle as a single vessel. Now in hindsight, as you'll see in the future, there's a way to improve this experiment, which I did later on. However, once these were both added because I was lazy and didn't really care about my yields, I then took the mixture outside and started grinding it up. So in this scenario, I should be wearing gloves because hydrazine is toxic and it can absorb through your skin. So once again, do your own research and don't reattempt anything you see in this video. Now that being said, I was wearing a gas mask rated for hydrazine vapors. Anyhow, because the vapors were escaping and my yield was lowering, I went and grabbed some ethanol and just added it to the mix. In hindsight, I would have added it to the mix right beforehand making sure it's ice cold, put in a freezer for a while, just so that those hydrogen fumes that escaped would be caught in the ethanol, creating my alcoholic solution. At this point, I'm grinding up the chunks, just making sure absolutely everything has reacted, and then I'll be pouring it into the beaker and letting it all settle. Here's a different camera angle of me grinding up the motor and pestle in the alcoholic hydrogen solution, extracting all the hydrazine into the alcohol. Now, if you are to reattempt this, personally, I think this is actually a pretty good way to fully react all of the reagents. However, you should be wearing gloves and make sure that you have a fan going so no hydrogen gets in your face. Now, at this point, right before pouring into the beaker, I did throw on some personal protection equipment because I knew some hydrogen would actually get on my skin, if not otherwise. So I did one pour, added some more alcohol to the mixture, and then did another pour just to safely extract all of the hydrogen.
At this point, some saran wrap was placed over top and the beaker was put in an ice cold solution just to allow all the sodium sulfate which has formed to settle out and then I could decant the alcoholic hydrazine. After some time had passed, the sodium sulfate settled to the bottom and the topmost layer was alcoholic hydrazine. I then decant this off into a separate beaker and use that separate beaker for the reaction. According to literature on nickel hydrazine nitrate, the complexing should take place at roughly 60 degrees Celsius, so I just use that same logic in the zinc hydrazine nitrate mixture. Now after a while, I added a bit of water just to completely dissolve the sodium sulfate. I did that in my previous nickel hydrazine nitrate procedure, and like I said, I'm just going to import everything I did over to this scenario. Over here on the right, I have a solution of nickel nitrate, and then on the left, I have my hydrazine solution. I'm going to be trying to synthesize some nickel hydrazine nitrate, just to make sure that my hydrazine is sufficiently concentrated, so that the nickel nitrate will complex and create this known explosive, so that when I try to synthesize this new explosive, I know it worked for sure. Upon adding the drop, because no pink color was present, that means the nickel nitrate did not complex with the hydrazine in solution. Now, in my experience, I presume this means that the solution is not concentrated enough. However, I can't find a scientific source that says why this reason is. However, despite me being visibly demotivated, I just proceed with their experiment. This is the grand finale when I complex my zinc nitrate with my hydrazine. So here you can see me taking it up with a pipette and immediately upon addition, the solution clouds up and I get hopeful. And pretty much what this is, is it is the zinc nitrate complexing with the hydrazine in solution. This is really surprising because it did not complex with my nickel nitrate. And this leads me to believe that actually creating zinc hydrazine nitrate is easier than creating nickel hydrazine nitrate. So like I said, absolutely no stoichiometry nor yields were used in this part. I just wanted to upload this video to YouTube to show people that it's possible to create this new chemical. And I don't recommend you following my procedure like at all because I did not follow the standard safety protocols or personal protection equipment or anything like that. I just wanted to document this chemical and as you can see it's possible to make. So once I felt like I added enough zinc nitrate, I removed the solution and filtered it. So immediately upon filtration, at the very bottom, some very fine particles came out and it created like this milky looking substance. So I don't know if this is my product going down the drain or just excess zinc nitrate. If someone has a anecdotal experience, leave a comment and I'll pin it so that we know what it actually is. So at this point, I transferred it to a watch glass and allowed it to dry. Now I'm just scraping it off the watch glass and transferring it to a beaker so that I can wash it with some water crush up the big chunks, and then let it dry one last time. Now I realized scraping an explosive off of a glass wash glass probably wasn't the smartest things, but I don't do a whole lot of smart things on my channel. Hence, I add some distilled water to it and then allow it to actually scrape off just so I feel a little bit more safe. After filtration, this is the wet product that I have. So I set it out in the sun to dry and it dried pretty quick. And after drying, it would just crumble into powder. I transferred it to a different watch glass. And as you can see, here's my yield, like half a gram, which is awful, but I made it. So that was the goal and it's complete. Now that we have the product, we go on to some energetic testing.
Here's another angle, and I'm check it out. I'm actually using safety goggles because the last one spewed pieces everywhere. This is the last deflagration test I did for zinc hydrazine nitrate. And when exposed to a direct flame, it has the same explosive effect as when merely exposed to heat. So there's not really a big difference and I didn't end up recording me exposing it directly to a flame. So when this explosive deflagrates, it actually leaves a zinc oxide coating on whatever surface it is on. And you can see here, I can lightly rub it off. And I know it's not residual powder because when exposed to a flame, it does nothing. Now we move on to sensitivity and detonation tests. So as you can see, it was not detonating at all by friction or a hammer. And I didn't record this. I thought I pressed record, but I obviously didn't because I don't have the video. But I even poured gunpowder on it and lit the gunpowder on fire and it did not explode. So with the remaining zinc hydrogen nitrate I had, I made another little aluminum foil packet. And this time I added some ETN as a booster. Now it seems like a lot when I remove this, but half of it spilt when I tried to cover it up. So only a little bit of ETN got in, and I don't think it would affect the explosive result. So once again, here is the zinc hydrazine nitrate with a little bit of ETN doped in it, and I'm just compressing it so that if it does detonate, I'd get a sound or something. And by the way, the residual black powder you see was from an experiment that I tried to record but didn't record of me heating the zinc hydrazine nitrate with gunpowder and still having it not explode. Here on the bubbly can is a methanol flame heating the explosive packet. So in conclusion, the explosions to this are pretty lame, but deflagrating it it is pretty cool, at least in my opinion. I don't think it would actually explode without the ETN dopant, but I mean, you're welcome to try it for yourself if you want to make this explosive. So in conclusion, zinc hydrazine nitrate or trihydrazine zinc 2 nitrate is beige, meaning it looks like drugs. It is a green deflagration. It's hard to detonate. It's insensitive to shock or friction, leaves zinc oxide residue, and it's easy to make. It's also insoluble in water and alcohols. Whether you enjoyed the video or not, leave a comment and I'll respond to it. You can always comment on the many safety violations I made in this video. That seems to be a running trend. And yeah, thank you. See ya.